Welcome to Tea Time, my friends, a place where I muse about my gender transition experience and in the process aim to comfort and inspire others to a greater level of self-awareness. I am Artemis, and uh, on this episode, I'm just drinking straight up ice water because this is going to be a very difficult topic to tackle. Uh, you're seeing the super straight movement out there, and um, I'm going to be tackling that idea but mostly through the lens of a video that was recently released by uh, a major figurehead of the trans or LGBTQ community. His name is Jamie, um, video channel named Jamie Dodger. I could be mispronouncing that. I apologize in advance if I am. Um, but he just released a video on the super straights. And Jamie, I appreciate everything that you have done for the LGBTQ community and that you've helped people feel more at ease and more accepted and just love, love, love in general. I disagree with so much of what you posted in this video and I'm sorry to have to be making this rebuttal. I feel though that it's incredibly necessary to do so. And I think it's important to have as many viewpoints as possible on any given issue to avoid getting stuck in the whole ideological dogmatism rut. Or, in other words, no one is right all of the time. So it's important to get as many different viewpoints as you can. So, Jamie, to you specifically, I'm calling you out not because I want to pick a fight or because I want to be contrary. Because Lord knows we don't need more arguments and more negativity. Instead, I'm hoping to bring to the table viewpoints from the other side of the coin so that we can achieve balance in this issue. So I'm going to start by, actually, in this video I'm going to be using clips from his video so that I can more address points directly. So, cue the videos. It's called super straight. Yep, basically it's just a new term for transphobe. Right off the bat, no, Jamie. Uh, super straight is not just a new term or phrase for transphobe or someone who's transphobic okay since straight people or straight men is myself i get called transphobic because i wouldn't date a the guy in you. that tiktok video literally says that he's tired of being called a transphobe just because he wouldn't date a transgender person and this is not a phobia your sexual orientation and therefore some hard boundaries that you are defining for what you would be happy with in a relationship is not a phobia. That's a sexual orientation. Just because you might be able to be attracted to somebody regardless of what dangles between their legs does not make anybody else who has specific criteria for that a phobic. Have we forgotten how to be respectful of each other's boundaries? especially as it relates here to what turns you on or off. And by the way, you can no more control what turns you on or off than you can your sexuality. So think about that for a moment. I did another video on what transphobia actually is, at least by the definition, versus what it's being used as um, in cultural context today. And to be transphobic would be to say that you hate someone or that you are afraid of them or averse to them literally just because they are transgender has nothing to do with sexuality. It's literally just, oh, you're transgender, I hate you because you're transgender. That would be a hatred or I'm afraid of you because you're transgender. That's a phobia. The real thing that this person seems to be very confused about, and that is very wrong to be saying, is that trans women are not real women. That's the transphobic part. So, Jamie, when you start your argument with the real thing that this person is saying is, that tells us immediately that you are engaging in a logical fallacy called a straw man. That is to say that you are creating another argument that is unrelated to the issue that was brought up and that, according to you, might actually be an easier thing to argue or an easier thing to defeat. But even that I disagree with, and we'll get to that in a minute. You go on to say that trans men are real men and trans women are real women, which now I'm going to unpack. Trans women are not women, and trans men are not men. If they were, you wouldn't have to put the 
prefix trans before man or woman. The actual definitions of man and woman, while they do sometimes have cultural context like be a man or that's a real woman, refers to biological cis males and females. But I don't actually think that you're saying that transgender people are the same as cisgender people. And I think this because you used the word real before you said men or women. As in trans men are real men and trans women are real women. And anytime we see that word, like real or true, that's cue for another type of logical fallacy, which is coined the no true Scotsman, or an appeal to purity. So in this fallacy, I pulled a definition here off the internet. It involves offering a modified generalization to exclude by accepted definition the desired specific case and counterexamples like it by appeal to rhetoric as opposed to an objective criteria. This rhetoric takes the form of emotionally charged but non-substantive purity platitudes such, such as true, pure, genuine, authentic, real, etc. So all of that to say, you are defining what real means so that you can make the argument as to whether or not trans men are men and trans women are women, which is wrong. What does a real man or a real woman even look like? I mean, even amongst cis people, you have a huge spectrum of display. Take, for example, a, a really butchy lesbian or a really effeminate gay guy. You can't even begin to objectively define the term real men or real women when you start to think about that spectrum. And if you were going to, then it might actually come down to, once again, the biological makeup of what makes males and females. So, look, may I make an offer as to what I think you're trying to do? I think you're trying to have trans people who, in their minds, genuinely see themselves as the opposite sex in which they were born, be just as accepted as cis people despite their genitalia. I mean, we are more than just our outer bits, right? I think we can both agree on that. It's a warm and fuzzy thought, and I empathize entirely. On that same note, I think you can give yourself all the validation that you need in saying that you are, in every way that you can be, aligning your sex and gender, and this does not have to be hampered by the truth that you were born the opposite sex. You are more than your dangly bits, and you do not have to go to such lengths as to warp the language. Is saying that you are now identifying as this new sexuality of super straight in order to avoid being called transphobic. Like literally saying, I'm super straight now guys, you can't call me transphobic. Again, Jamie, this TikToker is fed up with being called transphobic for having a sexual orientation. And yes, preferring natural D or V is a sexual orientation. You want to know what I see is happening? The LGBTQ community has so many rights and protections now. This isn't the days of Stonewall anymore. I've literally not once in my life come up against somebody who has spewed any kind of hate or discrimination against me once they learned I was trans. And that's amazing. I've been living in the deep south of the United States, which apparently is supposed to be a place where all of this stuff still lives vibrantly, and I've not seen it. Does it exist in small pockets? I'm sure it does. But it's not the prevailing narrative anymore. And now we're starting to see backlash, like the straight pride parades and now the super straights, because I feel like the LGBTQ community is getting aggressive and pushing for way more. I believe that there's a natural balance to things. So when something starts to get too far to one side, there's an equal and opposite reaction to balance that out. And this is what's happening with that pushback. The other problem with this super straight criteria is basing your sexual orientation on chromosomes. Things that we cannot see. And unless you're going to have every single person you date genetically tested, you are never going to be able to enforce that. And it might be a bit strange if on all first dates you're like, can I just take a little cheeky saliva sample from you right there? And see here, more evidence to that point. Now, I will give this disclaimer that I'm not speaking for the super straights. I'm just making deductions based on what I've heard these people say is that again as far as now what this TikToker is saying the language is being so warped 
to say that trans men are men and trans women are women, that these people who have no attraction to trans genitals whatsoever are forced now to try to define what it is that they want in more concrete terms that are irrefutable. Hence now why you're seeing things like, you know, I'm only attracted to people with XX or XY. It's, it's exasperation. So instead of empathizing with that exasperation and trying to understand them, you're mocking them by saying, good luck trying to get the next person that you want to date to get a, a swab so that you can check out their chromosomes. That's not cool. A couple that I've seen refer to super straight as their chosen sexuality, a sexual orientation that they have chosen. I think that says a lot about it. No sexual orientation is a choice. Yeah, so for them to say chosen orientation, probably not the best words. No, you, you can't choose your orientation. That's just something you're born with. But this poor choice of words is still not a reason to tear them down. It's still not to be propped up as evidence that what they're saying is wrong. A poorly made argument with a good premise is still worth listening to. In other words, don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. And this guy made a lovely little TikTok saying that all super straights have received since coming out is hate from the very people who are fighting for equal rights. This is bullshit. They're wanting to be oppressed. That's what it feels like. So that TikToker actually made a really good point. Since coming out as super straight, all they've received is hate instead of respect and acceptance for their sexual orientation. Taken objectively, that sounds pretty familiar, doesn't it? I don't think that they want to be oppressed. They literally are being oppressed by the LGBTQ community. A community that's supposed to be supportive of all types. So what, we're going to exclude acceptance and respect for those people who don't want to have sex or relationships with us? Good on them for exposing the hypocrisy of all that. It's like the LGBTQ community who is fighting this is interested only in protecting their victimhood minority status. And I'm personally ashamed to be associated with anybody like that. These people are not the enemy. They just want to be free to make choices about who they get in bed with. Super straight people are not being denied the right to marry, or being fired for being straight, or being beaten up, or even killed, or their sexuality being illegal. None of that is happening to straight people. And furthermore, just because these people aren't experiencing discrimination on a government level does not mean that they aren't being discriminated against, because they literally are by the LGBTQ community. We are not exempt from being able to discriminate against other people just because we've been discriminated against so largely before. Now, as a minority, we may never be able to enact the kinds of atrocities on that level that we have suffered on a you know, governmental level, but this does not then give us the right to claim our victimhood status as more significant on an emotional level. Everyone has freedom of speech. Do you know what? Go ahead. Come out as super straight say you're super straight. You are allowed to do that. But, and I have said this many times before, and I will repeat myself, freedom of speech is not freedom of consequence. So, yeah, freedom of speech also means that you'll experience consequence. And I think that calling the super straights transphobic assholes are people that cannot respect sexualities that exclude them from others' dating pools. And Jamie, for you to call it a fact that all of these people are transphobic assholes, is wrong for all the reasons that I've just talked about. And the consequence here for people who are coming out as super straight is you're gonna get told you're an arsehole and you are being transphobic. That's not discrimination, that's just a fact. Also, because making such a universal claim is another logical fallacy called a false dichotomy. Failing to recognize nuance and empathy for others, for the other side, is creating extreme polarization and it's tearing us apart. Adding the hashtag super straight to our community. Retweet if you stand with LGBS solidarity. Anything missing there? <laughs> we must welcome every valid form of exclusive attraction to our community. Hashtag get the tea out. Love is love. And yeah, this, this may be the only example that I've seen in your video of transgender exclusion and where I might actually agree with you. I agree, it's, it's kind of hypocritical to leave out transgenders and then post love is love. At the end of the day, 
hating on people who are pushing back when they feel that they've been pushed too far and claiming our victimhood status as a trump card does not get us anywhere. Practice empathy, curiosity, and civil discourse with people who have different viewpoints than yours. What's better, war or a handshake?